I wasn't sure about the jelly, but I really like it. my fellow soulmates and food lovers and welcome to another episode of Aileen's Kitchen Stories. Maybe you've come across the same question as me. Sometimes you just like to have a nice dessert and you just don't know what to go for. And if you're looking at the British cuisine, then there's something that is super outstanding that everyone loves and that's the trifle. So today you're going to learn how to make a lovely trifle which is yet easy to make. I'm hoping you will like it. Please check out the ingredients in a second and then we can start right in. And the trifle as a dessert is also known to be served as really, really festive occasions. Usually it can serve up to 10 people. A bowl can be up as huge as this or even double the size. Today, just for showing purposes, and I thought it might be a bit easy and we don't have to wait as long, I'm gonna just make two small versions of it. So don't get confused if you see that I'm using a little bit less of one or the other ingredient. Just make sure you follow the ingredients that I've showed you before and then you're good to go for a large one. If you wanna make small ones like I do, then just cut the recipe into a third of this. If you were looking for a proper Christmas trifle, then maybe this recipe is not for you because I'm using the Burt's Custard, which is super typical for the Brits, and I'm using Hartley's jelly to make this. If I would make a Christmas trifle, I would make it egg custard and I would make my absolutely own jelly. Okay, so the first step that we need to do now is prepare the jelly. I'm going to take our water and half of it I'm going to heat up in a pan. The rest I'm going to save. I can actually pop the water into a regular kettle, it's just that this fancy kitchen doesn't have a kettle. And now water into the jelly and stir and let it melt. It needs to completely dissolve before we pop in the cold water. <laughs> Time to pour in the cold water. The jelly is actually first recorded as part of the recipe in the fourth edition of Hannah Glass's 18th century book, The Art of Cookery. She instructed using hartshorn or the bones of calf's feet as the base ingredient to supply the gelatin for the jelly. Now you have several versions on how to prep the trifle with all the layers. What I'm not a fan of is now pouring the jelly as it is already into the form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it into a different bowl and let it set slightly. Usually that takes up to about an hour because that is just a small portion. I'm gonna pop it aside for about half an hour and then we can start stacking our trifle. Now the first time ever the trifle was mentioned or the name trifle was mentioned was in a cookbook by Thomas Dawson, a thickened cream which was flavored with vanilla and rose water. Many puddings were actually made in order to use up the leftovers. In the case of trifle, it was the stale cake. So the gelatin in here already did its magic so we can start. I'm gonna take my lady fingers, my sponge fingers. I've made these sponge fingers a couple of days ago because I don't like the ones that you can get here in the store. You can actually use Madeira cake, you can use Swiss roll, anything that you want. So you just break these up and pop them into the two forms. In the original trifle recipe, you actually use tinned fruits, but because we are in summer season, I thought it would be nicer to use fresh fruits as well. And now I'm gonna pop some of the sherry on top. That is absolutely optional, because if you have children, you probably don't want any alcoholic beverage in there. And now the last part is the jelly on top. Actually, a lot of people don't let it set, they usually pour it hot over there so that the cake really soaks up all the liquid. I don't really like that. I'd rather soak my sponge in a little bit of sherry and it still looks rather beautiful, don't you think? So these gonna go into the fridge again. If you're making a large trifle, then be sure to rest it until it is set. This can take up to three hours. If you've preset it a little bit, then it's gonna take probably about two hours. Right, now that the jelly is setting, we can actually prepare our custard, the perfect time to do that. I have in here my custard powder. I'm gonna pop in the sugar, mix this up swiftly. I'm literally not doing any magic, guys. I'm just following the packet instructions. And I'm going to take a little bit of the milk, mix this up well, and then the rest of the milk, we're gonna heat up now. 
Okie doke guys, milk is heated up now and we can pour it into the bowl. Pour it back into the pot and then heat it up again and let it thicken up completely. Now the most important thing here is that you keep on stirring otherwise it's going to stick to the pan and it's going to burn, right? Next step, next layer, custard on top. And again, this needs to go into the fridge for approximately two hours, I would say, until it is set perfectly. And then we can pop on our whipped cream and decorate it with the sprinkles that you love. In the trifle history, the English trifle actually has two, two cousins. For example, the Italian version, which is called Zuppa Inglese, so English soup. And then the Spanish dessert, which is called Biscocho Borracho, which is actually just a drunk cake. The Scots, for example, they have a very similar dish to the trifle, which is called tipsy lead, infused with some whiskey. And it's also very common in the southern US, where it's called tipsy cake, or in South Africa, where you have it as a tipsy tart. Whatever you call it, the most important thing is that you enjoy it. Okay, guys, on top goes the cream. You can actually decorate it with whatever you want, hundreds and thousands, berries. In the art of cookery, someone mentioned amaretinis. I'm going to sprinkle some amaretinis on top, so... Oop! <laughs> they went everywhere. Fruits go on top as well. And we shall not forget our almonds. Let's dive right in. <laughs> mm. Wow, the sherry is giving a very good kick, guys. I wasn't sure about the jelly, but I really like it. <laughs> that was such a nice dish to make, guys. A little bit more time consuming because you have to wait in between. It's really worth the wait, guys. It would be amazing if you could leave me in the comments below how you like this recipe. Leave a thumbs up for this video if you liked it. And also, there's one thing that you can do in order not to miss out on any future videos, which is subscribe for free to my channel. Do that, and then I'm looking forward to seeing the next video, guys. Bye!